was really sweet and pretty. I like Thank that. You. Hi, everybody. Hi. So Hi. we know that there are a bunch more of you out there that have not said hello because I see the viewer number. And now I'm going to go check out and see who's here who hasn't said hello. Hi. Um, it's possible that we have people who just have him on automatic, so they may not even be looking at the computer. But we want to say hello to Anon, to Bend Over, to <coughs> Dances, Electrical, Frankie, Grivix, Groly, Hero. Don't be afraid to say hi to us, guys. Prowler, are you out there? I know Rack is because he said hello. Stalfos, the Bovine, Troll, Wheeze. We want people to be friendly. Hiya, Veg. Hiya, Face. So I'm going to start off by telling you a little bit of a story. And um, this is going to be a pupper barking moment, so give us a second. Hey, a bear. 
Those of you that don't normally visit us, when puffers start barking, it's for two reasons. One is it's squirrel season, so they see a squirrel and they start to bark. Or when Josh comes home from work. So right now, don't tell our secrets, Rack. Okay, I won't tell all of them. Those between you and I and Whispers are just between you and I and Bernie Rack. Okay, so anyway, um, we really didn't think that we were going to be streaming this morning because we streamed every day um, throughout the week, and I think we even did last weekend, and we were going to take the day off because weekends usually vary for us because we typically stream Tuesday through, and then it depends on the weekend situation. I'm going to take a pause because I need to do a pupper check. One second. see how long it lasts for so um so this morning I was reading something on Facebook that really and truly touched me deeply and normally as most of you know I never write anything on Facebook um, but I read what other people do and sometimes you get these posts that just captivate your heart and your emotionality. And this one really did. And, you know, you don't know if these stories are true or they're made up by somebody because they want you to cut and paste and share and all that kind of stuff. Um, so people who, you know, sponsor the ads, make money or whatever the situation may be. But sometimes something just grasps your heart. And that's what this story did. Whether it's true or not, I have absolutely no idea. But the concept behind it, the message that came across to me in real life situation, a comparison of what that story was all about and what our daily life entails and the experiences that we've had together just kind of hit home. And I was reading the story, I wasn't reading the story, I was telling Bernie this story early this morning after I read it. And I said to him, I said, you know what, we really have to stream today. Because what I've been noticing like the past couple of days is that we've been doing a lot of rote kind of stuff. And I don't like that. And neither does Bernie, where people pay for a song or they subscribe and we hear the song on YouTube for a couple of seconds and then Bernie does his thing and then, you know, we go on to the next and the next and the next. And then we don't, we really haven't been talking too much lately. And I think those of you that are some of our old timers know that that's something that we tend to do a little bit differently than some of the other streams, that we really get down to the heart of heart with many of our viewers. And we haven't been doing that too much the past few days. And it could be because honestly and truthfully, um, our viewer list has gone down a lot and our subscriptions have gone down a lot and our donations have gone down a lot and we get hung up in oh my god we're not achieving our goals what are we going to do because everyone who's with us regularly knows that you know we do this full time to make a living and we kind of get caught up in the rut of not really doing it for all the reasons that bernie and i love doing this not just for the money but for the interpretation of what Bernie's music means to people and the message that we try as much as we can to bring across to others. And when I tell you this story, I think you'll have a really good understanding because it really hit home for me because I had a couple of situations yesterday with people and I'm not going to name those people unless they give me the permission to do so. Um, and that's why we decided to stream because of the story I'm soon going to be telling you. And, you know, as most of you, if not all of you know, we have to be really careful with what we say and how we say things, especially with all the new 
policies and implementation of protocol that Twitch mandates, and understandably so, for their streamers now. So we got to be careful that we don't cross those lines. But at the same time, we want to inflict the humanity of our stream onto our viewers, especially those that don't visit us regularly and those that may not be so familiar with what we do aside from just the music. And I'll be quiet for a second or two before I tell you this story because this song that Bernie's playing is too beautiful for words to accompany. I love you in a place where there's no space or time. I love you for all my life. You were the best friend of mine. And when my life is over, remember when we were together we were alone and i was singing this song Thank you. Apropos and perfect at the time. So I'm going to tell you the story. And I'm going to tell you the story with a little background music because it gives a nice feel to it. And I think that, you know, even though... Oh, that was really sweet, Vol. Thank you. Even though um, we're, of course, going to do lots of music today... We want to talk to you guys, and we want to talk about the human side of streaming, and that it is a business. Of course, it's a business. It's a business for Twitch. It's a business for Amazon. 
it's a business for us. But it goes for us, and I'm only speaking on behalf of our stream, it goes one step further. And we're gonna talk about that in one second. So the Facebook story goes like this. There was an owner of a restaurant. Didn't say where, don't know the location, doesn't matter. Not a fancy restaurant at all, typical diner, where you had two different types of people that were regular customers. Your blue collar workers and your white collar workers. Your truck drivers and your business folks. And don't know if the owner was a man or a woman, didn't say, doesn't matter. And the owner had the option of hiring a busboy who had Down syndrome and was visibly disabled, according to the story, had stubby fingers and a thick tongue and a speech impediment and kind of wobbly on his feet. His name was Stevie. And the owner knew that he or she wanted to hire this person and give this person a chance, but was concerned about the restauranteurs, what their reaction might be to him. And the owner wasn't concerned with the truck driver guys. He or she was concerned with the white collar workers and those that came in in their suits and ties for breakfast and their whitely pressed shirts and their cufflings and the 20 and 50 and $100 bills in their wallet. So what happened? The owner said, I don't give a damn. I'm hiring this person and giving this person a chance. Well, everybody fell in love with Stevie the other waitresses and people who worked in the restaurant instantaneously were attracted to him. He was a meticulous worker. He always made sure that the tables were clean before they had to, made sure that all of the salt and pepper shakers were exactly in the right spot, made sure that all the silverware was exactly where it needed to be, and did everything as minuscule of a job as your white collar worker may think that may be, or a dirty job, could not have done a more perfect job and everybody loved him. Well, what happened was he got really very sick and he was out of work for over three months and he had to have, according to the story, some kind of heart valve replacement that's very common in people that have Down syndrome and was very sick and came from, he lived only with his mom and lived on public assistance. And the story stated that the only way he and his mom were able to buy food was with the money that he made as a busboy cleaning up everybody else's mess. Otherwise, they wouldn't have had enough for survival. And the restaurant owner felt that there was something really wrong with her store, with her restaurant, when Stevie wasn't there. There was a feeling of emptiness and a feeling of displeasure and a feeling of sadness and they all missed him terribly, but couldn't quite put their finger on it at the time until this happened. She or he, the owner, refused to hire any other busboys while Stevie was out and had the waitresses and the waiters do his job while he wasn't there. And one day, one of the waitresses found a napkin that was neatly folded on the table after use. And it had Stevie's name on it. And she said, this is really weird. What could this possibly be? Should I open up this, this, this napkin, this dirty napkin? 
or throw it away? And why does it have his name on it? What should I do? So in her good graces, she opened it up. And I'm not gonna tell you yet what she found. I'm gonna give you the chance to see if you guys can guess what she found in that napkin. The first one who guesses will get a free song. What do you think she found in that napkin? You got it, Big. Big is gonna be the first one to get a free request. She found two $50 bills. And she was like, okay, this is very interesting. Let's see what happens. Every day then after, until Stevie returned, people, whether it be the blue collar workers or whether it be the white collar workers, either left a dollar in a dirty napkin with Stevie's name on it, or hundred dollar bills with Stevie's name on the napkin. And it was getting closer to his recovery and he did really well, thank goodness, and everybody was thrilled. And he was to return to work the day of Thanksgiving. The restaurant was open that day. And the owner of the restaurant decided to invite Stevie and his mom for a free breakfast with a big surprise. And the big surprise was that all the people who he normally bussed after were there to welcome him back. And at his table was a line table full, one on top of the other, of all of these napkins with Stevie's name on it. And it added up to over $10,000. And when I read that, just as right now, I am still getting choked up over this story. Because so many times, you tend to forget that there are really good people out there and that there are people sometimes the negativity of and now i'm talking about streaming the negativity of when you get a troll like i did the other day of somebody saying hey happy belated birthday did you turn 80 yet well you only look like you're 77 or somebody saying to Bernie, hey, you're still playing, you should be dead by now. And those kinds of people really piss us off big time, especially me. Because most of the time, Bernie's playing and doing his thing, and I'm the one reading the nasty, and many times the beautiful comments as well. But the nasty ones usually, yeah, they do stick. And I know what the mods say, and I know that many times they keep me in shape, and say, Mindy, don't do it, don't do it, don't let your alter ego Minerva come out, and don't let one nasty person out of all these other people get you down. And this story rang a bell in my mind about yesterday. Yesterday, we were on for about four hours and 45 minutes, and we were doing a dollar request day, and we were doing really not too well. And I was getting really like, oh my God, we're streaming for all this time and we made 25 bucks. And that's really not a good story for two people. And I kind of vented to somebody out there and said, which I normally don't at all do, except those that I'm really close to, aside from the mods, which are very, very, very far and few between. And I said to this person, um, I said, you know, do you have another request? Because this damn stream ain't doing nothing for us today, financially, that is. And before I knew it, this person took a very dark day and a very depressing sort of day and shone such an air of light and such a glimmer more than a glimmer of hope that good people are out there. And after this person did what this person did in terms of the donation, other people then followed suit. 
And in reading this story this morning, I thought about this person and a few others as well, of course, but that whether it be in streaming or whether it be in life in general, we all go through a lot of really harsh times. And not one person has a smooth sailing life. I don't believe that. We may not know all the bads that may go on. We may see, hey, one person has one damn good life here, but you don't know what goes behind closed doors. Nobody usually does. But what's so important is that when we see the goodness in people and we see that there's somebody that we can talk to or rely on or just share a moment of despair with and not only be there with an extra dollar or hundred dollars or fifty dollars or whatever it might be but with just an interpretation and a feeling of you got to push on and you got to move on and you can't allow a negativity to take precedence over everything, even if you're feeling it at that moment. That's what really streaming for us is also all about. To have met people that in our everyday lives, me as a nurse and Bernie as a teacher and as a piano player and as an artist, may not have all met before. And Bernie and I truly do believe that we were both meant to be doing what we're doing now. And that even though we may not be making, many people may think we are, but we surely aren't, a lot of money doing what we're doing, when we say we need you guys, we say it because it's the truth. Because without streaming and without being able to connect to you people in the manner that we did and the manner that we have and the relationships and we've seen the good and bad and evil in so many people over the past two years and seven months and the creativity of relationships, the creativity of friendships and the creativity of couples that have formulated on this stream. We've got to keep moving forward, but we can't do that without you guys. And oftentimes we say, how much longer will we be able to do this if we're not able to meet our needs? And that's really part of what today is all about. To explain to you why we do what we do, how much it means to us to do what we do, the appreciation of you loving what it is that we do, and a very, very special message. And you know who I'm talking to out there. That if it wasn't for you yesterday, today wouldn't have existed. 